You know, I have a dream that one day gamers will not be judged by the quality of their Fortnite skins, but by the epicness of their victory royale. <laughs> so, all right, all right, all right. Let's let's talk about this. Let's do it. Fuck it. On October of 2016, Battlefield 1 released. And it was, for many people, myself included, the first World War One themed game that they had played. And as a result of that, there was developed in many people, myself included, a interest in that time period and in that conflict. Because the Great War is often overshadowed by World War Two and other more modern you know, wars. But... The World War One, that period of the late 19 teens, was it was fascinating in terms of the development of technology, weaponry, gadgetry, um, mechanics, tactics, all kinds of different things. It was a, it was an extremely fascinating war, and it's one that people just didn't have a lot of knowledge of, or at least a lot of people, right, general gamers didn't have a lot of knowledge of before this game. But this game sort of brought it to their interest. It got them interested in learning some history. So I think you might know where this little, this little tale is going. Many, many, many millions of people across the world play video games. And I think that it is a great, um, it, it is of great importance that we look into using these games as a way to get people interested in historical events and potentially social issues, depending on how well they're handled. That's a lot of asterisks on that last one. But I think that Battlefield 1 is generally, it's a good go-to success, I feel, in terms of getting people interested. The idea of introducing aspects of history to new generations and a younger audience, perhaps, there's a lot of merit to that idea, and I certainly respect the, um, the, the legitimate desires for that sort of thing when it comes up. Now let's fast forward to 2021. Martin Luther King Jr. What a guy. What an incredibly influential historical figure who did so much good for the world. A, a legitimately iconic and uh, respectable man in history who helped us get through uh, what was admittedly a very dark aspect of uh, American uh, culture and society at that time. There's a lot that we can learn from MLK, and his example is one of those that we should strive to emulate in many ways. He stressed the value of a hard work ethic, of not relying on handouts, of nonviolent protest, of dignity in the face of indignities. What an absolute stand-up character, a hero in every sense of the word. Exactly the kind of character that belongs in Fortnite, right? You heard all that description, and no doubt all of you thought, you know what, this man belongs in Fortnite. Now, Fortnite in particular has a, a relatively low average age for a, I guess, a mainstream game of its kind, right? I think the average Fortnite age is 16 to 17, I think. Maybe that's wrong. It's something I read in an article. It's not too important what the statistics are, but it, it's significantly less than the average gamer age in the country, which is 34-ish. Well, let's take a step back for the moment. What exactly happened? What was the whole event? What was the whole idea? Well, in August, uh, Epic Games, who develops and publishes Fortnite, they would partner with Time, a Time Magazine, to present a sort of interactive museum, virtual tour, historical experience kind of uh, thing. Think of it as a, an exhibit, I suppose you could say. Now, this would have fantasy versions of the real-life landmarks from uh, Washington, D.C., like the Lincoln Memorial and um, uh, things of that nature, right? Uh, the Washington Monument... The reflecting pool that's out there. By the way, if you're ever in the neighborhood of Washington, D.C., I would highly recommend checking out the Martin Luther King Memorial. It's really cool. It's out there by the rest of the monuments and the World War II Memorial. There's a lot of really neat stuff out there. They did a really good job with MLK's monument. So, 
while you're in this interactive exhibit inside of Fortnite, while the I Have a Dream speech plays on a massive monitor and you could hear it all over the map, right? You get the idea. They have the exhibits where they have the whites and the colored fountains, and they have the, the video of the speeches playing. There, there are... Look, Fortnite is a very, very silly game. People run around in very s silly costumes and do stupid dances, and it's very unceremonious. It's very goofy. That's part of its appeal. That's part of, that's part of what Fortnite is. And when you combine the fact that this is an internet thing, and people will meme about it, and they'll make fun of it, and they'll have a good time, and they won't give it the, the reverence that it probably deserves, I, it, it does boggle the mind that this got through the, the approval stage, right? There's a time and there's a place to discuss uh, aspects of history, and I feel like one of, the, one of the worst, to the point where it would be its own joke, is one of the worst places to explore these things and to introduce them to budding young minds, which I will get to in a second. One of the worst ways to do this is to do it through Fortnite. I, I mean, sure, I, the lamentable United States public school system, even as bad as it is, everyone learns about MLK. No one doesn't learn about Martin Luther King Jr. and the Civil Rights Movement. It was important in our history, and it's somewhat still it, relatively recent. It's important people learn about it. This isn't stuff that people are going to be shocked to discover, right? It's not like we're uncovering some unknown segment of history that people would have otherwise never known. So, I don't want to hear this nonsense about people would never know otherwise. Because that's, that, that's bullshit, alright? That's bullshit. Young kids who, if they exist, people who've never heard of Martin Luther King, right? And I'm, I'm not saying it's bad. That's good. Everyone needs to know who he is. He's a, a very important historical figure, right? And I, I'm just wondering how many people are going to have potentially their, their knowledge and understanding of him tarnished and marred by the um, unceremonious goofery that happens in Fortnite. I just feel like there's a time and a place for this sort of thing. That's kind of why I started off with that Battlefield 1 analogy. It was, there was a, it's a way to get people interested in a topic. It, get, it gets people interested in a conflict in history that doesn't normally get really any historical coverage for the most part. But when you look at that compared to the uh, DC and 63 event in Fortnite, there's almost like this, um, it feels different. Like there's an attempt to be the museum on the thing. Um... There is, it's, I feel like, like, I, I understand that learning can be fun. And a lot of the times when people enjoy learning, it's often more meaningful. And it's more, I don't know, it's, it sticks more. And, like, you, you, but I feel like this is the sort of event and this sort of thing in history that you don't want to have fun learning about. Now, obviously, you don't want to make people feel miserable trying to learn about things because then they won't want to partake in learning. And you certainly don't want to rack people and make them guilty by learning about these things that happened before they were alive. We definitely want to avoid that. There's a happy middle ground of reverence and respect that should be owed to these kinds of things. It's like learning about D-Day, almost. That's an example of a, an event in history that was extremely important, is often portrayed in video games for World War II, but it's not an accident that I feel like its portrayal is often um, given with a very brutal and um, almost dark kind of it, it is presentation, right? It, it's in the presentation. Like, can you imagine if they did a, a Holocaust event, an interactive Holocaust museum in Fortnite? Like, that that's like a joke that hasn't been written yet. And all of you using this fucking meme the shit out of that. But it, it gives me the same vibe, where you're trying to tell people about a historic event that's of great importance that we need to be aware of, but you're doing it in just the worst venue possible. I mean, let, let's put it this way, right? It will probably come as no shock to anyone here that, uh... Wow. Bernice. Bernice King. Sorry, the name escaped me for a second. Martin Luther King Jr.'s daughter uh, said that she did not approve 
of this uh, MLK event in Fortnite, nor did the Martin Luther King Jr. Center. She said it was outside of her personal purview, and damn, I understand. This is, it seems tasteless, but it wants to be. It, looking at the pictures and the images of this event, it it's clearly trying in an earnest way to present something, but it just comes off as the total opposite of what it needs to be. I believe their intentions were good, but it was this was just a bad idea. This it was just a bad idea. The introduction to these kinds of events should ideally probably take place in a proper academic setting where kids aren't there playing games and floss dancing and cracking Wonder Woman whip emotes. <laughs> that one slipped through the cracks. Um, and, and wearing silly costumes and there to do little challenges to get rewards and whatnot. I, I'm glad that the internet response to this has been vastly negative, right? There's a time and a place to teach history to people using games as a medium. This is not how to do it. Hopefully this will be a, a lesson that has been learned by companies moving forward and they could find better ways to um, incorporate that into virtual experiences. When it comes to historical figures, there is a time and a place to joke and to meme. No event in history, no historical figure, um, no concept is beyond being made fun of. And I think that there's a really good, healthy venue to make fun of everything, whether it's, uh, hell, slavery or the Holocaust or plagues and th everything. There, there's a place to make fun of everything. It's what we do. It's what comedy is for. But in an academic attempt, maybe we should learn to separate these two things to make sure that what's serious is kept serious and what's jovial is kept jovial. You can simultaneously make fun of something and also recognize that it is of incredible seriousness. It depends on when and how you do both of those things. And by putting these kinds of events in Fortnite, while I understand your your attempt, while I do believe your heart was in the right place, I think we need to be a little bit more wise as to the venues we open up these events in.